So I have a theory that SAS is dead and hear me out on this because I may be early in this message, but once I put together my argument as to why I think this, I'm sure you'll very much understand. Now, think about all of these different SaaS products that are popping up everywhere now that we've got AI, from creating summary notes to the million different writers, from content writing to more marketing, ad copywriting. There's so many different platforms now that the complexity of using those platforms is starting to get a little bit too much. And it's only going to continue to become more that way. And what we'll find is that consumers, the people using these products, are going to get sick of having to change between a dozen different dashboards in order to just do a few little jobs. And we've actually used a bunch of these tools, things like Cast Magic that take podcasts, create summary notes, social media posts, turn it into whatever you want from, from your actual uh, podcast summary. And it's a really valuable tool when it came out. I loved it. But what I realized very quickly is that that particular tool is so easy to replicate. And I replicated it to 90% of the way within a few hours without any developer experience using different no-code tools like make.com and Airtable and really piecing it together in a way that is exactly how I want it. So that's what I'm being, being building. And that's the reason why I think SaaS is going away. And I want to show you my dashboard that I'm building right now so that you can see just how easy it can be. Now, before I get into the dashboard of Airtable, I, I planned it all out. It's like, okay, what, what am I doing inside tools like Cars Magic? And there are others. I don't want to pick on them because I do think it's a good tool. But ultimately, it's just become so easy now to replicate that instead of paying $39 a month for a tool that you maybe use a few times a week, you can create your own workflows where each time you run that workflow, it only costs you a few cents. In fact, we would pay $39 a month for Cast Magic, use it four times a month for the podcast, where now we're using the exact same workflow and it's costing us less than a dollar for the entire month because we have our custom workflows built out and that it is built exactly how we want it. We're not wasting any, any money in different places. There's two lessons there. One is if you can build a micro SaaS app, there's still time left to make money. And if you make it look nice and easy for people to use, you can make huge margins on these particular apps. But I really think it is going to go away. And especially for your highly valuable customers, big businesses making real money, they're going to pay to get their custom workflows built out through their entire business because it's just going to become so much more efficient operating from the one location. And that's exactly what I'm building now for my own business. We built up a pet care education company to seven figures pretty quickly, scaled it back to around 500K a year because that's kind of where it sits best. And it's easy for me to manage. I spend about a day per week on that. And I'm building in, the, in my spare time, I'm building out my own workflows like what you can see right now because I want to spend even less time on that particular business and I want to launch other businesses just like it without hiring too many team members. So I was like, okay, we do newsletters, we do YouTube videos, we do podcasts, we do blog posts, and we do a lot of virtual summits. How can we build our own workflow that is exactly how we want it for all of these types of things? And we can do that by tapping into APIs with OpenAI, Leonardo AI. Um, there is a perplexity API, which I was looking at today. You've got to pay some money for that one currently. Hopefully they get an API soon. That is free like the others. Uh, and then Metricool to schedule your posts using make.com and Zapier to piece it all together. And it's so much easier than I thought. I, I knew a little bit about these tools a few weeks ago, but now I know so much more and I realize how easy it can be. So I'm, over the next few weeks, I'm going to break down this entire content repurposing dashboard that I have. I'm going to show you, I'm going to open up the, the doors behind the scenes and show you everything that I've done. So far, I've spent a couple of weeks bringing this together. Before this, I had kind of jumbled workflows all over the place where I didn't have a lot of structure to them. You would have to repeat a lot of information multiple times. Whereas now I've, I'm bringing it all into the one dashboard to make it easy to actually produce. And it's not complete yet, but it's 80% like of the way. Plus then I need to optimize and stuff on top. But essentially, we will put in our brand assets here. And, and I built it this way so that we could have multiple brands. From there, we then have different workflows. For, so for example, the newsletter workflow that I would run would be something like, I would choose the brand asset that it's for, choose the newsletter working title or the subject line, uh, the preview text, and then put in my first draft here. What I would then do is start to trigger the each workflows 
from these buttons here. And these buttons are just a webhook that pushes certain information in these columns into make.com, which then allows me to feed that information through all of the different APIs like OpenAI, for example. From there, it'll then create a bunch of subject lines that I've trained it on to choose from. So now I have 20 different subject lines that I can test, that I can choose from, I can run A-B tests with, and I can take the best ones that are there and run them for my newsletter. But then I, I also have a framework, which I learned from uh, Frank Kern and then got reminded by Ali Richards recently of how to, how to write really compelling stories that are easy for people to follow. And that uh, particular flow is point, story, metaphor, and summary. So I try and write my newsletters using that format so that it's easy for people to engage in. So it gives me a report to see, uh, to let me know if I have in fact followed that or not. Then I want it to grab the main point of the article. The reason why is because I use that further down in the other flows. And then uh, using that information, I then do a, another final version of my particular uh newsletter. From there, once I have that human edited version, and this is actually key when it comes to creating content with AI. If you just rely entirely on an AI to create the long form content, to create uh, the short form content from the long form content, trying to create courses with AI, all of that type of stuff, it's not really there yet. It's getting closer every single day and there's just another update that happened today with Claude, which is getting the models even further along. But you still need to be an expert in your niche or in the content that you create. And if you can create that long form good piece of content first, whether that's a YouTube video, a podcast, a newsletter, a blog post, if you can create that yourself first, the rest of the workflow is so much better. So here's what I mean by that. Once we've got our final human edited version, we then create social posts here with this particular button. And what I've actually put together, which I'll explain further down the track, I can do a complete run through with Airtable is we've got all of these different uh, linked records right here with our posts in it. So we have a bunch of different posts in here um, that have been, that we have in a different tab in Airtable and it picks up those, those posts in a way that we want it and need it for make.com to work. And then it runs it through this social template uh, prompt here in OpenAI, one prompt at a time, and then feeds it back into Airtable, fully ready to go based on my templates. So it comes through here. It is then fed into our all social post tab. And let's just go back to uh, one that's already in there. So for example, we had a blog post today. I then created all of these blog posts based on the templates. And they're written in a way that is good for social media and we can repurpose them into reels. We can repurpose them into actual posts. We could repurpose them into any type of format that is relevant on that content platform right now. So, so that's just one scenario. But as you can see on this screen here in the new content repurpose section, there's actually 29 different workflows. I've built uh, a little bit more than half of them now that are working. And it pieces together everything. And it's not just writing content. This is one of the frustrations that I had with the other platforms is that they were too boxed into just content or just images. I wanted a platform where I could move between both very easily. So we have another one here where we've uh, tapped into the Leonardo AI API. And as it's creating the, the newsletter, it then reads the newsletter, creates a prompt that then feeds that prompt into Leonardo AI. That Leonardo AI um, then feeds it back into our workflow. Right now, I'm still uh, looking at the different prompts and optimizing them because that is a terrible photo. But there are some other workflows where we're starting to get this right. We can do other things like create a scope for infographics. So if you're doing blog posts, you can create an infographic scope, send that off to a contractor, then it's ready to go based on how you like it. The other thing is as well is, is creating hook ideas for each particular newsletter or each particular piece of content to give you something to use each time you log in to make a reel for your particular piece of content that you want to promote that day or that week so that you can come in and, you know, let's go to that tab now. I've got a bunch of different hook ideas that 
is there ready to go. It gives me the hook that I should use and then it prompts me on three different talking points for that particular video so that I can run through it so it's a little bit more natural while still having the compelling hooks there to, to lean on for capturing attention and so forth. So this is basically how the system works. And this is just one of many systems that I'm going to be building into the business. So this will handle uh, all of our repurposing for newsletters, YouTubes, podcasting, blog posts. Uh, we do a lot of virtual summits. Then it will push it into our social media scheduling tool. It'll then also line up our emails that we need to create and to make it easy for me to prove and edit emails in here. Then we give it off to uh, one of my team members who then goes ahead and schedules them. Basically, the punchline is this. I have really two theories. The first one, which I already told you, which I think a lot of these micro SaaS apps are definitely going to die. And maybe not the big ones. They're still going to have your Airtables and your Make.coms and your Salesforce and all of your big CRMs. But all of the micro ones that are solving a really tiny problem, I think they are going to go away in the years to come. There's probably still time to make some money if you wanted to build one for the next three or four years. But long term, that's just not going to work. What could work, though, is a new type of SaaS that makes this building process that I've just explained so much easier than what I've had to do. And I actually came across one today. I'm yet to trial it, so I have no idea how good it is. But making these custom workflows easier to build and also having access to multiple open AI uh, LLMs or open AI models at the same time is going to be highly beneficial. So you can just automatically upgrade into the newest and best one as they do come out and get released. And I think this is where SaaS is going now because it's become so much easier to learn with a couple of YouTube videos, with a little bit of playing around, a couple of hours in an afternoon, how to build your own workflows that work exactly for you so that you don't have to have a dozen different platforms. So if you are interested in this, I'm going to be diving into that dashboard in much more depth. I'll go through each individual dashboard one at a time, how I built that, all of the different make.com flows behind that so that if you want to replicate it, you can. And, and really just show what is possible. The second thing that I have a theory on is that it's just going to become so much easier now for solo entrepreneurs to build seven and eight figure companies. And there are a lot of theories in Silicon Valley world that there's going to be one person billion dollar companies built over the years to come as well, which is pretty insane. I know when I built our pet care brand to seven figures in six months, the biggest pain in the world was trying to manage employees from the hiring and the onboarding to then the training to then trying to make sure that their work was up to our standard and our quality to then, you know, as your team begins to get bigger and bigger, you've got politics to manage within the, the company. And while I enjoyed working with all of those people and I'm grateful for their support, it is a bit of a nightmare. And I can't begin to imagine having hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of employees, what that is like as well. So where these tools are going is very exciting and I can't wait to continue implementing what we're working on right now because it's absolutely changing the game for us already. So if you do have more questions about this, I want to answer these questions in uh, the upcoming videos. So comment down below and I'll make sure I get to them next time.